protection from hypertension while on anabolic steroids and testosterone replacement therapy. That's the name of the video today. I've always felt an ethical responsibility to protect my patients and not to mention the greater good of people as a physician and providing what I know that can lead to saving lives and reducing suffering. So this is the concept and this is what I'm doing today as a physician, reaching out to men that are on steroids and protecting men that are on testosterone replacement from the potential ills that we know may happen. It's very complicated and to do this, I am a board certified internist and I do have to use evidence-based mechanisms and known studies and theories and ways how to clinically treat, diagnose and manage people. So that's what this is. Today we're going to do a review and I'm going to present the mechanisms of action on how steroids can lead to damage through hypertension to the cardiovascular system and the kidney system. Because what I see is those things. That's what I see. I see damage from the coronary artery. I see damage to the a kidney system and I see it commonly and I see it in different progressive states. I see it early that we could, we could avoid, we could make changes and avoid. And then I see damage that is irreversible. And that's sad. You know, men having heart attacks, men having stents placed, men having different degrees of renal failure. And I have many men, unfortunately, that have gone for, uh, in, they're in dialysis and they've gone for kidney transplants. So I have decided to make this clinical decision to provide information clinically for the protection of people. This is never a blessing on steroids. You should not do steroids. Steroids can be very damaging. Testosterone replacement itself has risks. We need to educate people ethically and be caring and loving to patients and not to discriminate, but to help them see the right way and to make decisions for themselves. Thank you so much, here we go. Protection from hypertension, one, anabolic steroids and testosterone replacement. It mediates through multiple mechanisms, very complicated, very complicated. The cardiovascular system, that's the heart. There's the kidney system, which is, which is inherent in this, in hypertension. These models that we're working off today are known models. These are known models that anabolic steroids in itself different degrees of testosterone replacement and even TRT itself can lead to progression and acceleration of hypertension. And that is, these are known models. There are unfortunately a very limited amount of studies that have been done on steroids and testosterone directly on hypertension. And I've used these and I look at these, but this is really a compilation of my clinical data and know-how and experience for over 10 years and anecdotal history. And, and here it is. So it mediates through the kidney, it's very important, through the kidney, of course, the heart. We have the coronary artery, the uh, uh, artery itself, the endothelial tissue is the wrapping, of course, we have the plaque uh, production, which is coronary artery disease, and we can't get away from the mean arterial pressure in the, 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 the smooth muscle around a basic artery in your body that causes increase in blood pressure. <clears throat> three mechanisms, I boil it down to three mechanisms. There's a, there's a uh, renin angiotensin aldosterone system we're going to talk about. This is well known to physicians that are experts in hypertension, well known. And we use, we're going to talk about the medicines, of course, that, that, can be, that can be helpful in mitigating these effects. So this system, the renal system and the kidney system, what it, what it works on is, is, is blood pressure and fluid balance and electrolyte balance. So that's number one. And we're going to talk about the treatments down here with the sodium restriction and being well hydrated, ACE inhibitors and ARBs. I'm going to give the ones that are commonly used. The next level is the sympathetic nervous system. Sympathetic nervous system it, it is, is going to be working, of course, in here itself, but more classically, it works right here in the vasoconstriction of the mean arterial pressure in the body and the smooth muscle uh, vasoconstriction. Again, these are multifactorial, but we have to get some a semblance of uh, some mechanisms, what's going on here. So this is what I see. So 
sympathetic nervous system, the smooth muscles, blood pressure goes up, and, uh, and steroids directly cause this. On this system here, it, it, on the, the, the kidney system, there's an in, anabolic steroid, there's studies on this, anabolic steroids somehow lead to an increase in, in sodium retention, that's that puffiness, that's that bloatiness. And that's an increase secondary, at least to a, a, a hormone in the, that's, that's mediating from the adrenals that are related to the kidneys, aldosterone. So we have aldosterone up. So those are the two systems. And in a multifactorial fashion, the third, the third mechanism of action, fluid balance and other mechanisms. So fluid balance is, is in, in the end, none of these things are working solely. They're, they're multifactorial and they're all interrelated. Obviously the kidney, we said, talks mediates blood pressure and fluid balance. The heart is a, a pump and it works with receptors with these systems in your body, of course, to pump the fluid, your, your blood around your body. Very complicated autonomic nervous systems involved and the smooth musculature all throughout your body, the flight and fight, if you will, is right there. And of course, I always put in the coronary artery because the plaque production, this is coronary artery disease. These are inherent. The causes of death in this country, number one, are coronary artery disease. Of course, we have stroke as well, and they're, they're mediating through multiple mechanisms. But as far as a physician, we see hypertension, diabetes, and cholesterol. And that's what I mediate through. So and you know steroids has effect and testosterone on all these systems. So I have to bring this to you. Okay, so. Let's go on more. When we, also, when we look at these systems, there's also more things going on with the fluid balance. Nitric oxide is also being reduced directly from steroids. We don't understand why. So again, the kidney, we have the heart, we have the contraction uh, the, of, of the overall mean arterial pressure. We have a reduction of nitric oxide in the system. That's worsening just about everything. Feeding back on problems with the kidney itself, causing acute, acute and chronic renal failure, actually chronic renal failure. Working on what we always work on in the end, where the heart itself enlarges, this is great to enlarge. It's great to have a nice, we do it. We do, we, we people use, it's lovely, it's fun. It feels like a high to, uh, to have nice muscle, but this is a muscle. That's left ventricular hypertrophy. This leads to, to diastolic and first and systolic dysfunction. That's heart failure. The system kidneys fail, the heart fails, it starts, it doesn't pump properly, you're gonna feel horrible. And of course, in the end, we have the production of plaque, which leads to a heart attack, myocardial infarction. These things are all related, but today it's about protection from hypertension. Hypertension from steroids, including te testosterone replacement, because we all know that it's a dose-dependent variable. So we have the nitric oxide. Getting back to the sympathetic nervous system, we have sympathetic hormones that are definitely increased secondary to steroids. We've seen it in the studies, epinephrine and norepinephrine. Again, leading to the vasoconstriction. Probably the biggest things going on are right here and right here. It's, it's direct effects increasing the aldosterone, causing fluid retention, leading in addition to the vasoconstriction through these mediate sympathetic nervous systems that are, that are getting out of whack in an autonomic way. And, uh, and, and then it becomes this vicious cycle, vicious cycle. And in the end, you get LVH. You get, you get renal failure. There's focal segmental glomerular sclerosis. Please, I've seen so many cases now from all over the world. And not just African-American men, Caucasian men on steroids and Asian men. Amazing things that I'm seeing. And of course, this is what I'm doing. I'm giving it all back. Always going to give it back. So... You, it's multifactorial again, I can't say it again. So fluid balance, the renal, the renin, angiotensin, aldosterone uh, system, the sympathetic system, and the fluid balance I call overload and other, which I, I, I see that in nitric oxide. Okay, so don't do steroids. Please don't do steroids. If you're worrying about your health and longevity and suffering, just don't do them. Don't, don't do them. If you do them, see a physician. Don't do this stuff by yourself. This is way too complicated. I'm gonna give uh, the generic medicines, of course. I'm gonna, of course, it's the ethically correct way is to share this information. 
This video is equally as much as it is for you, for people on steroids, it's for physicians. It's for caring and a brotherhood, a sisterhood of physicians and sharing because this is what I do and I need, this is my full-time job, this is my obsession. So I need to share this as, as, a, as a healer and that's what I'm doing. That's why we're gonna, we're gonna share what the medicines are and I'm not telling you what medicines to take, I'm showing what the mechanisms are in an ethical way. That's what we're doing. You could please go see a physician, a brilliant physician that cares and understands hypertension. That's all they have to do. And you have to be honest. And we're trying to bring this whole, this whole milieu of, of steroid use and openness to a better place. For, for people around the world, there's multiple, so many million. Who knows? We're never going to know the number. It's, it has to be upwards of 10 million, maybe 20 million, and growing by the day, and including women. And they will be suffering. We need to reduce and mitigate the suffering. So the first piece, the first mechanism, the renal system. If you're on steroids, measure your blood pressure, monitor your blood pressure, get a comprehensive metabolic panel, look at your creatinine clearance, look at your labs, cheap and simple, be aware. So many men I see have had problems congenitally. They have congenital issues like focal segmental glomerulosclerosis. I've seen men would have dysfunctional kidneys. They didn't even know it was congenital. One kidney was fine, the other one was dysfunctional. They did steroids and they hurt that one kidney. Get a baseline. So, reduce sodium. That will help because, again, look at the mechanisms of, of sodium re retention, increase aldosterone, increase blood pressure. B stay well hydrated. The two medicines, ACE inhibitors and ARBs, the ones that I see, we see clinically across the world, lisinopril and ranopril. The other interesting medications are spironolactone and epilorinone, and those are anti-aldosterone medications. This is very complicated. The, the, these medicines are used, these last two, uh, the, the, anti the, the aldosterone blockers are used for various degrees of heart failure, and people that have had heart failure after having a heart attack. You don't just use these, but this is an academic academic video. So you have to include those there because again, this is mediating through the renin angiotensinogen system and the aldosterone system. So we have to, we, we can't negate, we can't leave that out. Next piece. So again, ACE inhibitors work great, work fabulously but for the right man that he's, to, to mitigate his risks while he's on steroids, to watch him and mitigate and ask him to come off steroids, ask him to come off. But as he's, as he's on steroids, we have the, we're obligated to protect him so he doesn't damage his kidneys and damage his heart. We have the obligation to do it. So that's right there. That's this ACE inhibitors, and if you can't tolerate, we use angiotensin receptor out ARBs, receptor blocker medicines. A bunch of these medicines. Doctors know how to do this, I can guarantee you that. Sympathetic system, very interesting, very interesting. High intensity interval cardio, that will reduce that for people that we know to have this essential hypertension. It helps, of course, re lowering the sodium. This is the DASH diet. These are all evidence-based modalities and, and recommendations for years for standard people that are hypertensive. High intensity interval cardio. Now. The medications for this are very, very complicated. They're amazing. Cardio selective beta blockers, they're all not so really cardio selective, but, but that's what we call them and other mechanisms. And there's calcium channel blockers. Nabivalol, amazing drug, amazing medication. It's, it's known to be kind of car basically cardio selective, but it's got its own mechanisms. It increases nitric oxide. Nitric oxide, we see it goes down directly from steroids. So, Cardavalol, Nabivalol, Cardavalol. Cardavalol, amlodipine, calcium channel blocker, these are basically these are beta blockers. Cardavalol is a, is, a, is a medicine that's incredibly complicated, apart from being just a beta blocker. It reduces catecholamine drive. And this is used, again, for the heart protection with, with, with people that have had, they have heart failure, different degrees, and they have heart, 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 heart disease, and, which is myocardial infarction. They've had a heart attack. That works over here. See, these work over here. These work up here. These over here, the sympathetic system, work here on these ep uh, blocking norepinephrine and epinephrine, the flight and fight. The flight and fight, heart rate up, blood pressure up, vasoconstriction, right there. If we could block those effects and this sympathetic nervous system directly is on, the, is on the myocardial tissue, feeds back also in a negative way, back up up in the kidney. 
And of course, in this plot pr production, this is, in the end, a, a, a multifactorial system, all negative, all very bad. So cardio-selective beta blockers, nabivalol, nabiv incredible medicine, incredible, well-tolerated by my patients that are men that are young that need hypertension medications, and we like to bring the heart rate down a little because maybe the resting heart rate is high, maybe in the 90s or greater. This is a very select, this is a very important, you have to have a good physician to do this though because you can't just give these medicines. And we have athletes, I have amateur athletes that are bikers and runners, you can't just give any beta blocker, they're gonna feel horrible. And beta blockers are not their first line of choice for treating hypertension. And it depends on the person, the race, the medical. It's so complicated. It's so complicated. Number one, kidney. Number two, the sympathetic nervous system in the system. The treatments. Three, fluid balance. Fluid balance goes back up, of course, to the first system, which is the kidney. Fluid balance. Magnesium can help. I've heard this and I've seen the studies. Juicing, doing not steroid juicing, doing juice like, like carrots and vegetables and, and doing juicing really, really works. And in essence, it's really reducing, if it is low salt type, it's low sodium and it's giving you very good vitamins and support. So that's all for my gurus and people around me that recommend all these, you know, doc, please don't do the medicines. Please hit the, the nutritional aspects that are real. People can make behavior changes. So here it is. It's all together. Fluid balance, you have to look at an interesting medications called diuretics. These are the, actually the most commonly used medicines in the world for hypertension. And these are all cheap medications and generic, except for one, one or two of them, but I'm not gonna point out which one it is, because not, that's not a sales call here today. Hydrochlorothiazide and chlorothalidone. These are thiazide diuretics. These are very valuable. Again, some people don't like them because they can cause malaise and fatigue. They can disturb, they can disturb the, the electrolytes. So we have to, and do not use Lasix for blood. Lasix is not an, an anti-hypertensive medicine. Of course it will lower blood pressure. It's not used. We don't use it as hypertension. We use it for fluid imbalances and heart failure. We don't use it. Unfortunately, people are abusing these drugs, including insulin and Lasix for bodybuilding shows. I'm not gonna hate on that. I disagree with that. I disagree with any use of a illicit drug or even a, a regular drug for some type of a performance enhancer that you're gonna get hurt. It's not about cheating in here. This is not cheating in this room. This is reducing suffering and being ethical and being open and honest and being a good healer and physician. So there it is. This is heart protection, protection from hypertension while on anabolic steroids very complicated. Please share the video. Please enjoy my videos. Please go to metabolicdoc.com. Please go to anabolicdoc.com. And thank you so much. I'm Mr. Connor here. I'm glad you made it to the end of the video. If you liked it, hit the like button and please subscribe to our channel. And I look forward to bringing you more cool and interesting videos just like this in the future. Stay strong and healthy. Yeah.